All right. Hello. What's going on? This is an untitled hybrid fitness racing podcast with the homie Ryan Kent. First, happy Father's Day. Thanks, bro. Yeah, we're on to uh, my third Father's Day. Um, each one's been a little bit different. I've had a couple meltdowns already today, um, but that's <laughs> just all part of being a dad. And e Emotional meltdowns or like yeah, toddler he's, meltdowns? So he's just going through this phase right now where he wants to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And if you tell him no, like he will full on just sit down in the middle of the floor and just start crying, bawling out of control. <clears throat> Sounds a lot and, like dad uh, though. A little bit. <laughs> and like, so last night, for example, I was, I was, so Sarah's been out of town. She went to a bachelorette party in, in Newport beach, California. So I've been with him the last couple of days. We've got her parents in town, which has helped some, but um, I'm putting him to bed last night and I'm like, Hey buddy, like we need to put on your clothes and um, put your lotion on. Sarah's all about putting the lotion on his body and he wasn't having it. Like he was like, I'm done. Like, don't want to play this game. And I was like, all right, let's go to bed right now. Then I went over, cut his light out and said, I'm walking out like it's over. I'm leaving. And dude, that just escalated the situation <laughs> even more. He's like, don't you walk out on me, dad. You don't walk out on me. And, I run uh, this. When we're talking, I, I run this. Right. And I went to Sarah's mom and I was like, hey, can you take a turn with him? Because I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm mentally done like right now. And she went up with them and I could hear him talking about me upstairs. So I decided to walk up there and, you know, make amends. And he just looked at me and I looked at him and I opened my arms up for him to kind of come in for a hug. And he came up to me and gave me like the biggest, warmest hug. And um, I think he felt bad about how he was acting. I felt bad how I was acting and we made up, but that's just kind of in a, in a nutshell, that's parenthood like right there. And Basin's two and a half. He's two and a half. Yep. That's crazy. Now that he's, you can, that he can go through those type of complex, like emotional rides and have a bit of perspective. You know, that sounds more like an adult interaction you have. For sure, him. for sure. The things he does and some of the things he says, I'm just like, wow. Like, you don't seem too to me like two like before i had a kid i thought two was still like a baby but like two this kid's riding his bicycle you know like i mean he's just non-stop he's got uh, his daddy, he's got his daddy's energy when you came up in and hung out memorial day like unfortunately the funniest thing that happened is when homie <laughs> just rode his bike directly into the fence <laughs> <laughs> and then just tipped over. <laughs> Take, he takes he's taking his lumps, and I appreciate that about the dude. <laughs> and he um, gets he gets back up. He got right back up. He got yeah. right back up. So the basically the idea of this podcast, right? Like we mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time together when we train we train a decent amount together, we travel together, and we often just have conversations about what's generally interesting to us, and that is hybrid fitness. So I can't like with the idea is like, hey, why don't, you, why don't we kind of record this thing and see how it goes? And I was like, fucking great idea. Let's see how this thing rolls. So Rich really doesn't need another podcast for the listeners. He he's got like ten at this point. Am I am I oversaturated? Is it like old news now? It might be tough on you now. I don't know, man. Maybe I, hopefully I bring a different dynamic to it than <laughs> than than the reinforced running, which You're is gonna... usually just you. And then what do you got? R r race brain. Race brain, act like you don't know. Yeah, we got a race brain with Jack and Bracken. And yeah, that was your idea for me to just to go solo on that too. Like, why don't you yeah. just do like shorter ones? I was like, you know what? That sounds like I thought it was gonna be less work. Um, it is because it's not as much like chasing people down and scheduling people because that's annoying. But like I like to be prepared a little bit more and kind of know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I'll get on there and just kind of talk what I'm, whatever's on my head, but a lot of times it's like here's a point, here's a point, here's a point. So that it's not necessarily less work. But they're less show, but less show and easier to schedule. They can do them whenever. Did you ever give me credit for that, by the way, on I an just, episode? Say? I just did. <laughs> I just after how many months? <laughs> I may. I think I may have. I think I may have on some of the OG ones. Like, what are you? You're not listening. So, what does it matter? Yeah, how could you even know? No, I listen. You listen. I listen to more podcasts than you probably, dude. I I work a job where I need things to keep me busy. It's you either got windshield music, time, windshield time, man. Yeah. So. I've actually come across some really good podcasts lately, um, dipping back into the running world a little bit with all the NCAA championships happening, um, the the Diamond League going on right now. I've been all about some running, so I've kind of dove into 
um, that world a little bit more than I have in, in past and found some other good podcasts. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just like, dude, this is, is this awesome. like flow track? What's the pot? What podcasts are good for so the city? You ever heard of Sidious Mag? Uh, yeah. And then the running effect, okay. those two. They're good. Um, they've had some, yeah. And they've had some like high profile athletes on there. Um, like I listened to one with Eric Jenkins, who was announcing his retirement from, from track and field. Um, some other big, big names in there too. It's a, it's, it seems oh, like Evan Jaeger, Evan Jaeger. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. That was another one I listened to. So they're more so. interview based or they news based? Um, a little bit of both, mm. a little bit of both. It's, it's almost like an, it's such an undertaking to bring on a new podcast. I get such stuck in my ways. I'm like, this is my podcast on Monday. This is my podcast on Tuesday. Like bringing in new ones is, and it, it's a little bit of what happens to me when I watch like Netflix. When I watch like a new Netflix show, I'm so impatient that I'm like, it's either I need, either need to think it's going to be awesome as soon as I watch it or I'm off to a new one because there's so many different shows. Same with podcasts. I'm like, if this doesn't hit it, I'm not, I'm not going to hang around. What is it? What is it for you when you listen to a podcast that really kind of draws you in? Is it the topic? Is it is it something as simple as the person's voice is soothing? Mm. You know, like um, that's a good question. I don't. I think I think it's topic, and I think it's honestly a lot of it's like wanting to get some sort of almost instant analysis, right? Like I like sports podcasts that come out like a, if I watch Super Bowl on Sunday. On Monday, I want to listen to a podcast about exactly what I just kind of mm. experienced and maybe didn't have someone to kind of talk about with more or less, you know, just yeah. kind of like hearing different perspectives of like what happened. And it's usually sports or sometimes like TV, like I'll listen to, to podcasts about TV shows that I'm watching. And uh, so I enjoy that. I started listening to cool. a CrossFit podcast recently too. Like that's something that I'm trying to dive into a little bit more just as a fan. I don't, I don't consume too much of the hybrid stuff or, or OCR stuff because I'm on all the podcasts. So like, it's just me listening to me. I'm not trying to do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I started, I started getting into some of the European hybrid podcasts recently. I, I feel like I stuck strictly domestic. I stayed on my turf. But USA. as of recently, man, I've I've been checking out some of the other ones, and I don't know if it's the English accent, but it's it's very soothing to listen to. How many Brits have a podcast now? Like freaking, I think that's at least that I'm listening to. It's got to be three, four, three, four, maybe five. That's, I mean, so. US, U.S. If you count, Matt has hybrid fitness media. But the reinforced running is mostly hybrid. Like race brains, like half maybe, uh, and. That's probably it, right? Am I forgetting anybody? No. US. So there's four no. or five in the UK. And then our our guys. Oh, in, there's uh, OFX. And OFX. That's not OFX. Like, that's Canadian though, dude. True, true. That don't true. count here. They uh and our our dude that when when we were in Dubai <laughs> visiting, we went to Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, Spirit level Spirit, what was it called? Spirit level? I think that might be it. Yeah. That'd be it. That dude has a podcast, George Crew. Have you, you popped on that one? And uh, no. Tim Tim was on it earlier. He was. He's, it's a pretty new one. But what are the uh, what are the three or four years to UK ones? There's uh, the UK or it's hybrid hybrid uh, the fitness racing podcast, mm. um, Rock Zone podcast, and then Rock's Life. Those are different. Yeah. Who's, <laughs> <are> the, <laughs> <laughs> who's Rock Zone? Rock Zone. Here, let me see. I think Rock Zone is that guy, Greg. Rock's life is Greg. Oh, Rock's life is Greg. So um, you don't even know. Ian. I think Ian does. Yeah. Yes. Um, the other one. Yes. And Ian's a buddy with Matt. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so so yeah, there's there's just a ton of great options for, for content in this space. And, you know, we kind of wanted to bring the same thing, but kind of with a with a different twist in a way because like dude we've been let me break it down for the people like rich and i i didn't like this guy rich i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make this short and sweet <laughs> um back when i had when when sarah was pregnant and and basin was getting ready to be born i took a break from training and racing and during that time uh this guy named rich ryan was was taking over 
the hybrid scene, especially on the deck of fit side. Like he was mm-hmm. crushing, he was crushing deck of miles, setting records, crushing deck of fits, setting, setting records. And meanwhile, I'm over here just like this guy, wait till I come back. When I come back, I'm going to put you in your place. Cause I don't think we had even met. We had it. We had I was, it. I've, I was at some Spartan races that you were at. We've talked about it since then. And you're like, you were at that race. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. dickhead. I was at that race. <laughs> So, so yeah, like the whole time I'm like this rich guy, man, taking my, taking my shine. Like when I come back, I'm going to put him in his place. And, you know, ultimately I got back into shape and we raced and I beat you, of course. I mean, it's no secret. Whatever. Um, but you Where, did Chicago? beat me. You did beat me. I did world championship. It's true. But, you know, long story short, I freaking spent five minutes with this guy and was like, crap, like it, I like him. Like, I feel like him and I are going to get along. And I kind of have this. I had that thing with Alex Ronkovic too, when we were in Manchester, i wanted to hate this guy because he's such a competitor of mine. And then we hung out, we went out to the bars after the race. That's the homie. And I'm like, God dang it, dude. Like, why are all these guys? I want to rip their heads off. They're actually like good dudes. And I want to hang out with them. And oh, that's... always happens. Oh, like the European no, race, the world championship the year before, same thing. Every year I met, I was like, awesome person, awesome person, awesome person. That is what's kind of nice about the community in general. And I've heard conflicting reports about other communities like being so competitive that it kind of ruins it. Like they're really not very much. There's not camaraderie necessarily between competitors, but it's really not like that in this space, which I think is like really refreshing. For sure. For sure. And I, at least on the high rock side of it, you know, I think we, everyone just respects the race so much that like if anyone's even remotely close to you like in a race like you know that they've put in the time and training to like get to that level and i think there's just this crazy amount of respect amongst the competitors because we all know how much time we invest into training and into racing that like at the end of the day man like you you can't hate any of the other guys you know it's like dude hats off to you you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you think our record is i definitely have i have you and me Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we were actually texting the other night and normal banter between you and I. And I was like, actually, you you were saying something about beating me. And I was like, actually, how many times have you beaten me? Let's break this down. And the, we came to the conclusion. It was once. You beat well, me one time. Well, but, hold on. In, okay, okay. I, I forgot. And I am i don't know if you forgot a little competition called OCR Stars Season 2. <laughs> What do you mean? I got the banner here in the uh, I, the dungeon. I'm counting that one. That's a win over Atkins too. You have what? One win over Atkins. I have a win over Atkins too. I've so. got a few over Atkins actually. <clears throat> More than I beat him in Seattle. I beat him in New Jersey. Um, I beat the beat him at the Spartan Cruise. That don't count. Um, that don't count. <laughs> Um, I almost beat him in a battle frog race back in 2015 came very, very close. Um, you can take, but, you can take like the deck of strong plus at Spartan games. Does that count? The deck of strong, strong, super, the super, super strong deck of super strong. Yeah. With the grass I beat him in that too. Um, but yeah, we, we, we figured out that you only beat me one time. OCR stars are just two. Just, okay, two, two, two. And two if times. you want that, there was three events within OCR stars. Kicked your hiney and all of them. Okay, okay. But you did the the official one. You made count. You beat me at the 2022 Deca Fit World Championships. But it ain't gonna happen again. <laughs> and if we counted, I mean, I didn't. We couldn't even count. I don't even like because the other. If we counted the Spartan races too, I bet it's like fifteen, maybe, maybe not Probably. that many. Maybe, nah, maybe ten. Two and ten is what we're saying. We've probably raced almost ten hybrid races against each other at this point. We had three. Well, we had three decas last year, just deca fits, and then we had three events at Fitfocker, two strongs at a mile, and then we've had uh, two. We had two uh, high rocks in twenty twenty two. Or 2021, I guess. I don't remember. We, didn't, with the Chicago, we had Chicago and Worlds in 2022. Yep. West we Palm. Had, I mentioned the deck. I said the DECA. Oh, okay. So I'm up to eight. And then we had three High Rocks this year. 
three. LA. Anaheim, LA, and Houston. Yep. So that was eleven. Two and eleven. The tides are turning, though. <laughs> we're, we're feeling strong. I got youth on my end, so as you continue to get older, and I stay a little younger. I got, Speaking I got of this high rocks, high rocks talk, man. I was when we were talking about doing this thing together. I couldn't help but think about all the people in Europe that are like, "Am I going to ruin my reputation right now by getting on a podcast with Rich Ryan, the guy who just <laughs> shame, the guy who just shames all the European athletes?" Well, that was so, another. I, I didn't have the opportunity to go to Worlds and and you know, make friends with these guys. Now it's just no. straight up all adversarial all the way through. For the record, Rich is a good guy. Just give him a chance. Appreciate you give having my chance. back over there. I did. Spread that good word. They didn't believe you though. So like, dude's a clown. Maybe not. Yeah. Dude's a, if I would, I, if it was, if the tides were turned and someone was talking talking that kind of shit like I was talking, I would be like, I would not have any time for me <laughs> in, in that in that side of things. But whatever, they don't have podcasts. I do. That's right. And now you have another one. Another one. So we want to we want to be yeah kind of like what we're thinking a lot around in terms of what's been going on in this space, what we're thinking about it, and what we're thinking about a lot is training. And so you're just coming off of the high rock season. So are you ramped back up yet? You, you seem to be like ready to. You're like putting in work. You had a good workout today, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm putting in work right now, but I'm really other than my one day a week where I put in like my endurance day. Um, which right now is about 90 minutes. Um, the rest of the week I'm keeping at about an hour tops. Mm. Cause I just spent months and months of getting up at like four 30 in the morning and training for two, two and a half hours, then going to work all day, coming home, seeing my kid for 45 minutes. Then he goes to bed. Then I go to bed and then waking up and repeating the whole thing. And it was just a lot, man. So I'm just enjoying this time right now with, with, with training, I'm, I'm still putting in work, but like I said, I'm capping my set, my sessions at about an hour, um, which is allowing more time to sleep, more time with family and, um, just trying to let my body also just recover from the months and months of hard training. And, you know, I got some things I'm kind of working on right now, but at the same time, there's a lot of freedom. I've got a lot of workouts that I've written down over the past couple of months that I've been wanting to experiment with. Mm. And just, you know, once you get dialed into your, your high rocks training, like, you know, what workouts work for you just kind of stick, stick to those and you don't get to experiment as much. You, know? you, you kind of have to keep the course, right? Like it, if I feel like it's real easy to follow the shiny object, if you have an idea of what's going to work, but for me, it's always, I got to see through a, like some sort of progression to make sure that there is improvement happening one way or another, even if it's just repeating it once or twice, like. It still needs to be done or something along the same lines of what I had previously done when, and I got a little lost this year in, in high rocks training because my season kind of got pushed up because it was just like, uh, all of a sudden, instead of my a race being worlds, it turned into like a w month before worlds. So I had to really condense things and try to put in way too much volume and intensity or more than I needed. I should have. <clears throat> so I didn't really get a good, so my, my, training got a little scrambled around at that point. Um, so it's, it is nice to be able to kind of sit back. I, I've been about six weeks back into training now. I took about two weeks down from where after Anaheim and I'm getting much more, very much more structure again mm. and feel good about that, that type of structure. Uh, having like two or three weeks of out without structure is also like, how unstructured are you right now? Like when you are not like really dialed in the training, I'm still pretty structured. Yeah. Like I'm writing out my training a week in advance. I'd say that's, that's still, there's some structure there. Totally. That's how I'm it just, I'm like looser on exactly what I think I should be doing. I want to touch on what you just said about the progression thing. And I think that's where you and I, I think differ a little bit. You are the kind of athlete who like, I need to see that I'm getting improvement. And, and by doing that, I will repeat workouts from time to time to just, to just know that I'm getting better, but I don't necessarily need like, okay, I'm going to use a running workout, for example, like, okay, this week I'm going to do 10 by 400. And then 
next week I'm going to do 12 by 400 and right. then 14, but I don't need that kind of progression in my training. Or if, you know, if you could use, I'm going to do 10 by 500 on the row this week. And the next week I'm going to do 12 by 500 on the row. Like I don't need to have those little increments of added volume happening every week, but I still need to repeat workouts to see that I'm getting better, but I don't necessarily need that. Like every single week we just keep adding, we keep piling on the cake, you the know, progressive overload. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like you are that kind of athlete who needs I, that. I like to see it in training so that like benchmarks don't become as important where if it can be progressive over time, like you can literally see improvement every single week just or just like feeling it either through volume or some sort of intensity or just some sort of metric to kind of look back at or even just intuitively like as you're doing it but so i do like that as opposed to being like this 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 benchmark workout i don't love benchmark workouts i guess i should say outside of like racing what do you consider like a benchmark workout like a 2k row so like, like time time trials time trials yeah or like less. or but like a benchmark sim a benchmark workout couldn't be five by a mile with 45 seconds rest. Could that it, be a benchmark workout? It could. But like if that was something, yeah, that could absolutely be it. There's one that I did in High Rocks earlier in the season as I was still kind of getting over that hump of the freaking training for High Rocks. It's that, that hump we had to go through from, from DECA to get yeah. back to High Rocks was just <laughs> so brutal that the training in, in between was just miserable. What it was was I was doing – thousand meter run 1500 meter uh, ski 50 uh 50 meter sled push thousand meter run then i'd rest like 90 seconds and then do something similar thousand meter run 1500 meter row 40 burpee uh 40 burpees over the rower i think i flipped that whatever and then and then a run then i finished with thousand meter run thousand meter row 60 burpees thousand meter run 60 burpees and i repeated that a couple times that and then that that ended up kind of being a benchmark workout and then when i would finish or when I would go back and I, from one race to the second race, that I knew that that workout showed improvement, mm -hmm. so that it gave me confidence to go in that I was going to be better. But on the opposite side of that, like if I feel like benchmark workouts can carry weight that's unnecessary, <clears throat> and there's different factors that play into how you're performing these. Like it's like I don't want to have a workout not go well, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like a benchmark workout not go well, and then be like all screwed up in going into the race being like oh man did, was were all these weeks wasted as opposed to just be like i trust this training i trust that it's working i'm gonna race i see it i see it progressing over time i'm gonna race in it and then figure it out from there and use that kind of as the benchmark yeah i get it i think i think we both have agreed that we're gonna keep high rocks training in mm -hmm. in the weekly program kind of year round so that we don't have to go through what we went through this past year where I, it took me a couple months to really kind of get into form. Um, and you kind of, I mean, you, you came around there, right? Like last minute, but like, it still wasn't quite enough. So and then I, I overdid it. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I was like ready to ramp up and then I just got injured, uh, because I ramped up too much. <clears throat> but I yeah, think like for me, the, the, the big difference in, training right now that I'm doing is I'm, I've added a third quality day. Uh, so right now, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays are quality days. And each mm. day is I bring something different to the table. But in, in the past, like this whole high rocks block, it was only two days a week. Mm. Um, a lot of that had to do with like work and scheduling and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, but I was piling on so much in those two days, you know, like I'd go, like on Tuesday morning, it would be like a track workout, like a massive one where I'm getting a ton of volume. Then I'd come back to the house and do like a Metcon, right? Um, and then it'd be something similar on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday. I'd, you know, switch up the workout just slightly, but I'd have these two monster sessions on the same day. And we, everyone, we know about uh, double threshold training and all that stuff. Like that's, everyone's doing it these days, but I sort of felt like with my work schedule and being on my feet all day, it was just leaving me so exhausted mm. that I'd rather just cut out some of the stuff that I was doing and add in a third day. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing 
now. So I, you know, getting only one recovery day in between your sessions, um, is, is, is a little bit of a change. You have to keep that in mind when you're actually doing the, the workout itself that like, Hey, like I'm going to be going hard again in two days. So like, you know, if you can drop the hammer, like you don't necessarily need to trademark and then trademark. And then on the recovery days, like I have to like really take the days in between the intensity sessions, like super freaking slow. I'm talking like if I'm going for a run, it's going to be no faster than like eight minute miles. Mm -hmm. But if you have three or four days in between intensity sessions, sure, you have that one recovery day, but then you can get back into like kind of that moderate zone mm -hmm. where you're you're not really training easy, but you're not training hard either. Um, right. So what? I would say my training is very polarizing in that way right now where I have very, very hard days and then super, super easy days. This is something that I started doing with, I just started this. I mentioned it a couple of times that I'm doing nine day cycles. Cause I was thinking that feeling that same way doing in a seven day cycle that trying to fit in what well, will one trying to do like the double threshold, the multiple workouts on one day, uh, twice a week. That was, I don't know. I just don't know if that works very well for high rock specific work because it's, it's so much volume Yeah. like, and, and maybe I'm overdoing the volume and I just need to cut it on both ends, but it just seems like to get where you need to go for high rocks, it's just too hard to double back and do something like the same that day. Um, but then I was running into issues with like, with what you were saying, like trying to fit in all the pieces that I wanted to like a row or a ski or whatever it is. So I've stretched it out to nine days now, which I haven't done in, I feel like I tried this when I was like in my early twenties, <clears throat> but I don't have any real recollection or any type of evidence of, of how it went for me. But basically it's just giving me a couple extra days to recover. So I'm not like forcing my way back into a high intensity workout um, where I might not be ready or I can kind of go out and get a, some longer, easier miles. Cause it, within that, with a seven day, when I was trying to cram in some of that intensity, one piece that really fell out was my long run. Like I wasn't like my long run. I was just reading kind of, I was just kind of like running 10 miles every time I would run, but I was never like hot eight, take hot take. What you got? I think, I think long runs are overrated in hybrid and hybrid racing. I'm not sure. I don't think we need to be going out and just running for an hour and a half to two hours. From a like, recoverability standpoint, I think you're right. Like it's just like a lot, right? To then come back and then be able to fucking hit it and really go hard. But if you have extra recovery days built into there, like. Yeah. So I'm going to try to get it back in. Let's see. It's just hard. It's, you think about it. It's In DECA, we never run more than 500 meters at a time. And in High Rocks, we never run for more than a thousand meters at a time so why should we go and run for an hour and a half just running what i've started actually doing is is doing like 30 minutes of so like my long run yesterday for example long workout not long run but was a 30 minute cross train where i basically I did uh, some rowing some skiing and assault biking and every time i would switch the machine i would do like 10 weighted pull-ups or something like that. Every time I would switch a machine. Just in case um, you get back into that OCR grind. Yeah. Are you, are you in Palmerton? No, I'm, I've bailed on Palmerton. <sighs> Legit. I like, we have a wedding that we're going to that weekend. So okay. um, <laughs> yeah, I could probably pull it off, but it would require a trip from mammoth, which is where OCR world championships is going to be, which is not an easy location to fly to Palmerton. Also and then I, I'd have to be back the next day for the wedding. So <laughs> It would just be a logistical nightmare. And then you'll like you'll trip and fall, not make the Something. not make not make the finals. <laughs> right. But I would tear you all up. VJ Jones, I would get you, boy. <laughs> just, just just let everybody know. I'm not gonna do one, but if I did do one, it'd be a problem. Mm -hmm. But right, yeah, so I would wrong, do like long... yeah, I would do like these 30 minute cross training where I would do machine work and then just sprinkle in a little bit of strength work every couple minutes, like over the shoulder tosses, things like that at low intensity. And then I went and ran for an hour or no, I went and ran for about 45 minutes. And then I came back in and finished off with another 30 minute cross training session. Yep. So I, I, I got, I went into the running part a little bit fatigued and then I came back and did some of the cross training 
a little bit fatigued and um that's just another thing i'm kind of experimenting with is just adding taking the vo the running volume down keeping the volume of the workout still high but sprinkling in some other methods of cardio and strength training um in the middle of it and like that i think is a viable option right like if we need 90 to 120 minutes of aerobic work like i don't think it all necessarily needs to be like just running i find running to be the most effective Right. Like it's like, it's yeah. going to more bang for your buck, way more bang for your buck. It is definitely harder to recover from, right? Like if you split it up that way or like, I'll do yeah, like 90 minute AMRAPs or things that I like to, to do myself or like program for, for like my programs. And then for the athletes who I'm coaching, but it's like, you know, 2k row, 2k ski, 80 meters, 80 cows on the assault bike. And then just like descending ladder for 90 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you are efficient enough within those movements, I think you can continue to get that aerobic stimulus that you need where I would find where I would kind of like in my own, I would, the intensity, it doesn't need to be high, but like, it's real easy to go too easy on like the rower for when it's like easy or something like that, you know, so or the it's bike. Funny, it's funny. You mentioned the bike is a little bit, it's, I think it's easier to get your heart rate up on, on like, on, on like, an, uh, assault yeah, and like, and like, keep it like sustain. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's I'm the either. rower. I did, I did, I did the math. Right. So I'm like, okay, what, what would, what would I be on a 2k run and then taking that data and then breaking it down into like, okay, if I can run a 2k in this amount of time, then what should my easy run pace be? Right. Mm -hmm. And then I take my 2k row time or my 2k ski time and then try to use that same math for the machines as I do for the running. And it doesn't make sense. Like, I feel like I can row and ski at an easier effort closer to my 2k pace than I can with running. Does that make mm. sense? So like you're, if you were to run a 2k, right, you would do your pace would probably be what, like, we'll just say, uh, five tens. <laughs> We'll just use five minutes for easy math, 75 second laps. But we'll, right? but like, <laughs> but it's five tens for, okay, for real. Uh, so, yeah. So that so, would be what, 615, right? Uh, for 2K. Yeah, sure. And then so you're saying your easy run then, if you're averaging five minutes, your easy run's probably seven minutes. Right. So we're looking at what, 30 seconds per 400 slower? Okay. You got that? Uh, yeah. You with me? I'm with you. So what would okay. Okay. I see you breaking out a pen. You got a um, pen? I got a pen. I got a calculator. This isn't going to go. This so 2K go. pace, 2K pace is 75 second laps. Okay. Easy pace is 105 second laps. Okay. Okay. So now let's go to 2K row. My 2K row, I actually don't have a 2K row time, but I'm going to use some hypothetical numbers here that I, I think that I should be able to hit like seven. Um, get the F out of here. C wait, can we cuss on this podcast? <laughs> we can do whatever get we the want. Fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, 630. Okay. 630. So about 15 seconds slower, right? Than my run 2k. Okay. But then you have to, you have to break that down by quarters, break that and down by quarters. You do it. Okay, so that would be – why don't we just say 640, and we'll okay. do 80-second 80, 80 second, okay. 80 second laps. 80-second laps. Okay. So that's a 140-500 pace. Mm -hmm. Yep. And for me, I can row under two-minute 500 pace, and it feel easy. Mm -hmm. But there's something that happens when I get like – into the mid one forties that the effort it's, it's, it's only a 20 second difference over the course of 500 meters from my easy row pace to my but, hard row pace. But you also have to, when we're doing my minutes per mile, right. It needs to be like, you have to time, like times it by three essentially. Cause we're doing minutes by, or we're doing time by 500 splits as opposed to 1600 meter splits. I don't want to lose the listeners here with this getting too complicated, but too like we're losing, we're losing each other. Long story here. Long story short. 
if I do the same math that I would do for running and do it to the machines, my machine easy pace would be like 210 to 215 on the row. And that's just it's too easy. Too easy. So I'm closer to my 2K pace, um, even though I'm going easy, um, than I am with like running and other things like that. Exactly. I guess that's, that's, the, that's the point I'm trying to make. That's the point. And like when we're doing long, sustained efforts, when it's so easy to just to kind of like settle into what would essentially be like zone one and mm -hmm. make it seem like, and oh, this feels easy. It's like, yeah, it does. And I think like an easy run, maybe just because I'm so runner that, an easy run to me feels easier than like rowing at like what, where it should be would probably be like two flat or like one fifty seven would probably be easy. Right. And like to sustain something like that for an hour would be really hard, <laughs> but like an easy run pace at seven, 10, seven 30 or whatever. It doesn't feel that that doesn't feel hard. And I think it's just because it's mechanically um, I'm, I'm more attuned to running than rowing or skiing that like I'll need to have breaks put in there. So that's why I like to do things like thousand on right and switching the machines just so I can not fatigue muscularly. I have a trouble rowing or skiing more than 2000 meters at a time. I can like do two, I can do two K and then go, go run for a half mile and then come back in for like another two K. But there's just something about just being stationary and like not moving and, like not having things to look at what's the longest you've gone on a rower it might be 2k <laughs> that's, that's be, what you're at 2k <laughs> <laughs> you gotta sit your butt on that rower and see and see what's up did you just see uh t side tangent real quick did you just see dylan scott like did a half marathon ski on the ski erg and what was I his pace think average like 155 wow really and maybe i'm giving him too much credit dylan you can chime in, hit us up, um, let us know. But I think he he skied a half marathon at a one fifty five five hundred meter pace, which that's I don't crazy. know if I can do that. I mean, I no, I mean that is one fifty five. I, I how long did that take him then? It was like did an it, hour and a half, like an hour and a half at that effort. What do you think, homie's running a, running a half marathon in that? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I did a 5k ski as part of a workout and was, and it was doing one fifty ones and I was very happy about that, but it was like taking it to the well a little bit. So to then do, do that three more times, four more times, I, I, like my hands would get blisters. I have like a big callus right here, right now from that workout. That's because you got little girl hands, dude. dude you, you've done one K row at a time and you're Bro. like, Oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna do something. I'm bored. These hands deliver hundreds of packages every single day. <laughs> what, was right. that? What, what was that? Like just your hands on the bottom of the package, delivering it right in. I do what wear do gloves. I got to keep these hands. Got to keep them nice. Good. Keep yeah. them nice. But so like Dylan, for example, he's efficient enough on that thing that he can sustain that pace. So for him, zone two work is very attainable on that, on, on those machines. I think just mentally too. I mean, physically, I feel like I could probably somehow will myself to it, but mentally, I don't know. I mean, you can't even watch a TV really when you ski because your head's just bobbing down, you know? You get they get they got those little I got the concept to skier uh, new and they sent me one of those things that sit on the top of the PM five for like your phone. Oh, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It, it actually isn't bad to watch stuff. Nice. You've done I, it. Oh yeah, I do it a lot. I, that's how I caught. I'm, I'm catching up on. Well, I watched all the men's NCAA track and field. NCAA track and field's my jam. I'm it's into like, it. It makes me so happy every year. I'm like nice. And indoor track and field happens. I'm like nice. Uh, but I was watching, I watched all the men's broken up by, by event and I'm watching the women's now all the way through like the three hour event mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm, I'm doing that on the skier. It's a good opportunity to do that. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm texting Dylan right now. See if I can get some answers from this guy because <laughs> <laughs> he does some incredible things. And well, I, he's probably still working through some, some world championship demons too. So imagine what that's like. how, how, how much, but. yeah, how much he works out. And then if you toss some demons on top of 
performance demons. What is he going to, how's that even going to, he might never come out of that cave. I know. So what's your plan then? What's your plan for wall balls? What's my plan? So do more. It's that more. simple. It's that simple. You know, you think you are doing a lot and, and look, this, this functional fitness space is still relatively new to me. I've spent a lifetime in the fitness space, but it was more in the running field, like getting my body to a point where it can handle the amount of lunges and wall balls and sled pushes and farmers carry and burpees that you need to perform at a high level in high rocks has taken some time to get my body to adapt to that. Um, and, and I will say this year, I took a big step forward from the previous year in terms of my volume in, in the stations, but clearly I, I still need to do more. And I'm going to use Alex as an example. I, I, I've, I brought this up to you. That's the homie when I, now. When I got back from from Manchester, and he was telling me that he does these thirty minute wall ball workouts, where he basically has six minutes to complete a hundred wall balls. And I'm not. He didn't. He didn't really break it down in terms of how he did that. But you know, you have six minutes to get a hundred wall balls done. Break it up however you want to get it done. If you want to do a hundred unbroken. Get done in 3.30 and have two and a half minutes rest, do it. If you want to do sets of 10 and get done at five minutes and have a minute rest, do it. However you want to do it, get 100 in in the six-minute time frame. But when the six minutes is up, you then start another round of 100 wall balls. Every minute and on you, the six minute. How do you write right. that, right? And you, and, yep. And you do this for five rounds. So in this workout, this 30-minute wall ball workout, you're getting in 500 uh, wall balls, which I'll go ahead and tell you, I, I, I'm, I don't get 500 wall balls in, in a week. You know, I, I, I might get 200, maybe 250 in a week, Yeah, but to do 500 in one session, it just opened my eyes, man. I was like, dude, I'm not, I can be doing more or maybe not even more. I just need to be more selective in what I choose, where I choose to spend my time. That you just know? seems excessive but to me, though. It does seem like a lot. I did I did an, a version of that the other day. I did an E2 mom. So every second minute on the minute, I would do 40 wall balls. Um, so they took about a minute and 20, and then I'd have 40 seconds rest. And I did that for five five rounds or so. Um, so I did about two 250. 250 wall balls. So every second minute you would do 40 wall balls and that got hard. The first two or three rounds were fine, but then the volume of it all, like my legs started to wear down, break down on me. I didn't have as much pop coming out of my squat and my shoulders were starting to get, you know, toasted. And I'm like, you know what? I haven't gone to this place in training with wall balls and maybe that's the limiting factor. Yeah, you know? when you put it like that, because I mean, the, the hardest part about those wall balls, right, is like, it's never how it feels in training on the race. And it's really never. hard to get to the place where you need to go in training to to replicate it in any way. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think there's some merit to that. But the recoverability from that just must be like, were you beat? Are you beat from that every E2, yeah. mom? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I did. I, did I went to work afterwards and was... Just kind of yeah. moseying around all day. <laughs> uh, I did. I did Karen on Thursday or Friday, which is just one fifty for time, and I was sore from just that. Like I've been trying to sprinkle in wall balls from a different route, like kind of doing twenty five to forty at a time and like longer Metcon mm -hmm. type things. Just I just need to wrap my head around. <clears throat> for some reason, this year the hundred, the number hundred, got to me, which I don't typically like in High Rocks. Like everything is a hundred. <laughs> Almost right. If you think about it, like I even counted my strokes on the ski and the row. The skis are like 120. The row is right around 100. The lunges, it's like about 100 lunges. You know, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of 100, 100 meters of push, 100, 100 meters, 100 meters, of, meters yeah. of pull. Right. So, like, it's like the number itself isn't that much comparatively to everything else. But for this year, I was just like, I would get to 30 and I'd be like, I have 70 more. <laughs> That's too many 
So I'm trying to wear down that, like being like, okay, you can always do 40. You can always do 50. You could always do 60. Cause you'd see on the, on the female side, they can always do a hundred. Mm-hmm. Like a hundred's like not a problem to like, for like Meg. She's like, yeah, it's just what I do sets of. And it can be a, it can be a daunting task, you know, for, for, and I'll use myself as, as an example, you know, I come into the wall ball station in Manchester with about a 10 to 12 second lead over Alex. Mm-hmm. And in my head, well, not even in my head, as I'm coming into the station, I'm already backing off of my run pace because I'm already thinking about what I'm about to endure. Mm-hmm. Whereas I need to be coming, I need to get to the point where mentally, like you said, a hundred feels like nothing, right? Like I need to get to that point where a hundred is like no problem, or at least to the point where I can walk into the wall ball station, not walk in, run in and pick up that wall ball and just go to work immediately. Don't feel like I need to ease off my run pace going into the zone um, because I'm scared about what might happen to my body during these Mm -hmm. final, you know, couple minutes of the race. Um, So there's still, believe it or not, man, there's just still so much more work to be done. Um, You you get better every single year and you know, that's always the goal. But when you kind of break it down and and look at your training and your race results, it's like, man, there's still so many ways to get better, you know? And like with the wall ball, with the wall balls, for example, like there's no other station really where it's like, man, I hope I survive this one. (laughs) And maybe it's the placement, but it's also probably because of the placement that if they put the wall balls, where burpee broad jumps were, you'd be like, all right, I'm just, I'm going to get through this. Like Mm -hmm. I have to Where wall balls. It's like, for me, the wall balls, wall balls got me this year, man. I think I only had one race where I was satisfied with how I actually performed in wall balls. And during that race, the main thing that was going through my head was just like to not be a bitch about it (laughs) where like, I felt like that was what, happened to me the day the race before is that like okay the mentally it got to me and i just would break and i would just try to go and i would just break and the only time i didn't was when i was really like don't let these freaking things beat you but i don't think about that on any of the other stations Mm-mm. like never and for me i mean it's i mean it's i'd like to say wall balls are not a weakness of mine but clearly it cost me two spots at the world championship. So, um, it's just, it's different for me because in DECA, the Ram burpees, which is the final station is actually my strongest of all 10 zones likely. Um, so if I am behind, if I was in Alex's position coming into the Ram burpees, I would be like, I'm about to eat him up on Mm -hmm. these 20, 20 burpees. But There's no worse feeling than having your weakest station, the final station Mm. of the race. Like that has to change that. It just has to change. And 20 Ram burpees you can sell out on. I've been completely exhausted coming into the, you know, the zone 10 and and DECA and still able to sell out. You can't sell out on a hundred wall balls. Like they're like you, I've heard you say before that you can always do one more. But there does come a point where you just can't, whether it's in your legs or your shoulders. Or arms, yeah, or, like, I end up jumping at the end of Karen. I was like the last like. Uh, I, How'd you break that down, by the way? Just real quick. 40, 40, 40. And then I was okay. like, and then I was going to do 30. But it ended up being 40, 40, 40. Quick like, breaks? or uh, eight, eight to 10 second breaks. Okay. Like, like not super quick, but like composing myself and getting back under. And uh, then I did like 23 and seven or some bullshit like that. <laughs> cause like, cause the way you said, like I got to a point where I was jumping mm-hmm. trying to get it there. And I was like, I might start missing this thing. So, was, and that's another thing I think was like, if this workout was 200, could I keep going? Or is it that thing again? It's like, Oh, almost done. Right. Almost done. Like it is right. like that, the, the, the mental side of it. Um, but yeah, there's definitely, there's certainly a physical part where it's like, you're going to start missing and like no reps on wall balls are pretty shitty. Mm-hmm such a savage way to end a race i know <laughs> they, should, they, they could make it a run after if they really wanted to that would be a sad imagine the how embarrassing that 
Well, dude, we, we would look on that. I had to do an all after. out. I had to do an all out 20 meter sprint. And you know how high rocks has that little ramp that runs up to the finish line. So I finished my hundredth rep and I look over and see Toby running right behind me. So I immediately just like instinctually just took off sprinting and I hit that little ramp and it's gotta be what a 2% incline. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. It, it felt like, it felt like 30% and I about lost my balance and completely just fell flat on the floor crossing the finish line. Cause my legs were just so done at that point that just the slight change in, and the ground surface, like almost threw me down trying to get, trying to get up to speed too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if, they, if the race ended with like another, I've got another K, but even if it ended with just like a 200 meter for maybe one lap around the, mm -hmm. the convention center, I don't know, man. Do you be think some it, wobbly legs, dude. You think you could have run them down in with a quarter, or was it just like not um, happening at that point? At the, I think had it been like a quarter, I actually think I could have. But if it would have been another K, probably not. I think yeah, I could have. I, I could have willed myself for for another four hundred meters or so. But, uh, speaking of, I ran a full on four hundred. I did that last week too. I did two. Two weird, two weird benchmarks. I thought about doing that today and I bailed. I was like, I'm good, dude. I'm good. <laughs> I, kept, I kept being like, I really don't want to. I was like, this is going to suck so bad. But like, at the same time, I was like, well, it's going to be like a minute. And like, I'm going to be like on that. Like, it's not like an 800 where it's like, oh my God, am I going to die? It's just like mm -hmm. pushing hard and then dying. You know, like it's not as mentally, there's not much mental and enduring or like, a lot of weight hanging over you when you're doing a 400 is just like get to that last stretch and just hang on. And would you rather sprint a 400 for time mm -hmm. or 30 cows on the assault bike? It's an easy uh, answer for me, but I know what the majority of people would probably say. The majority of people would probably say I'd rather run a 400. No, I'd rather do the cows on the bike for sure. Me too. Yeah, me too. And maybe it's because from, from our background, we just know, how embarrassing it, it is for us now. What's your fastest 400 split? I've done a 53 and a, and a 53 and a four by four in college. Okay. Yeah. Like I, I split 50 point, uh, like high on a relay in high school. Um, so like nothing official. I think, I think if you dug into the official, like an open 400, did you ever run an open 400? Yeah. I think the best I ever did was probably like 55. I think yeah. 50, 54, 55. I, I mean, I only ran it when I was a freshman because it would just stick me in anything. And I wasn't, I was just like, it was the first time I had run anything. I didn't do that cross country or anything. I didn't know what I was doing there. They would stick me on there as like the third entrant in a race just because they could. Mm -hmm. And I would just like run 58s. I may have got under 58 yeah, right. one time and got <laughs> they, last. They would put me on there too. And all the other teammates were like, stoked that i was on there because they'd see me you know win the mile or win the 800 and think that it's like an immediate like it just if you can run a mile you can run a 400 you know and it just doesn't no. i'm like no guys like i need to be i need to be second or third on this team i don't need to be leading off or anchoring oh for the like, four by four yeah, yeah yeah put me third put me third baby <laughs> like, I don't, there was I don't there, want that pressure there was um it was it was weird because it didn't it wasn't as painful as I thought it was going to be. And maybe it was just like the duration of it, but also I just don't think I'm able to put myself in an anaerobic position enough to like really have that lactate take over the way that we can on a bike, mm -hmm. right? Like in a bike, like you get that, that lactic acid, that byproduct of that is going to happen. And like, you're just going to be like, Oh my God, I didn't necessarily get to that place because I just don't think I'm capable of it right now. Like, I don't think I can go hard enough to create a complete anaerobic response. And do you think, would you say that that's something you need to work on? Like I, what was interesting then is, so I was going to do just like, so now that I, I'm not doing as much volume on my like high rock specific days, like I'm, I'm still doing high rock specific movements and, and making sure like all that stuff kind of gets touched, but I'm not doing hour to hour and 20 minute like quality sessions things are kind of broken down a little bit shorter than that so i'm starting to, I'm, so my double quality sessions I, i'm able to accomplish again 
but I found that if I do like a quality gym session in the morning with more Metcon stuff, like the afternoon piece, I'm a little bit more tired if it's just going to be a run. So I was like, all right, if I'm going to do threshold workouts in the afternoon, I'm going to do 400s with hundred meter jog recovery, right. At threshold pace. So like 520 pace, right. So like this isn't a crazy workout. Um, the hundred meter jog is, yeah, it takes, I don't know, 35, 40 seconds, 35 seconds. So like not a lot of recovery, but not really that, not really cranking on the, mm-hmm. on the duration. List. I did that 400 before the workout because I knew I wasn't going to try to do that after. And after maybe like three or four minutes, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm recovered. I'm ready to roll. I was so aerobically exhausted that it took a long time for me to actually gain my complete composure during this run. And like, so every 400 was like kind of a suffer fest, whereas like pretty easy pace, generally speaking for where I'm at right now in my fitness and for, for, for a minute and change of work, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But mm-hmm. I think that just dealing with a lot of the byproduct that came from that 400 really put a hindrance on my actual runnability, kind of like the sled, you know? So it's like, oh, okay. Like it's not just isolated here. Like the, the what's happening when I'm going really hard in some spots is like hanging around and I'm not able to recover from it. So it was a little bit eye opening. So like, do I need to work on my 400 speed? Like not really, but would it be helpful in terms of my ability to, um, handle that byproduct, uh, during a race? Like, yeah, I think so. I remember you were in a group chat with, with, uh, some other fellow, well, what, what would you call it? It's, da- it's called the dads of hybrid racing, but not everyone. Happy, in father's, is happy father's day to everybody in the dads of hybrid racing. Yeah. A lot of them. Whole There's a lot of, dads. of them. There's a lot of them. And you, we were in there and, and Nick, Nick came in there and said that he ran his 400 and I don't, what do you run? 55. Riker? 56, 57, 57, 57. And then you came in and were like, all right, I'm going to go do it. And then you came back on a few minutes later and was like, okay, I ran, I ran a 59 and I'm just going to chill out for a few minutes and then hit my workout. And I'm at work, but I'm, I'm following along and reading the thread. And I'm thinking to myself, when you said that, I'm like, I think he underestimated how much this 400 just <laughs> took out of his body, dude. Uh, I did. Cause I've, I've done, I've done similar things like that. Like even, you know, a 400 is a 400 I've done you know, a mile, a mile hard. And then like, okay, then I'm going to get into my workout and it never, the workout never goes as planned after putting forth like a really monumental effort beforehand, even if it's a minute long. Mm -hmm. So, but like, is there something there? Like mucking up a workout, right? Like that's basically what happened. It wasn't like this perfect, clean, nice running workout that I typically like. It was so like mucked up and just like not how I wanted it to be and way harder than I wanted it to be that I was like, Oh, maybe this is the space I need to play in a little bit more. I agree with that. I agree with that. You know, some of the workouts I've done since world championships, um, really no rhyme or reason. I just come up with them and I'm like, let's just go hurt. Let's just go suffer for a bit. And then I go and do it. And I'm like, this is something I've been missing. Like mm-hmm. there's, there's really no specificity here in terms of like direct correlation to my race, but in terms of the feeling of it, it's exactly what I need to be feeling. And that's one thing when you're talking about before, like how I'm going to lean very heavily into progression, you have a good intuitive sense of like, I need this right now. So I'm going to do this to make sure my fitness remains where it needs to be, or it continues to to grow. Um, and I think that's a big part of how we, where our our training kind of diverges in terms of the organization of it is that you're just like, I I pick something where I'm like, this is where I think I need to go. And then I see it through. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I fucking miss, but other times like right on where you're like, I need this right now. So I'm going to go do this just to make sure like I'm feeling confident through the progressions. I just need to go hurt. I just need to go suffer. Like I don't care what I'm doing. I could be doing, uh, dumbbell snatches. Is dumbbell snatches in a freaking high rocks or deck of it? Are burpee box jumps in a high rocks or deck of it? No, but like they exercise, suck. They, they suck. gotta happen. Yeah, they suck. You know, I just got a 
uh, 150 pound sandbag, like a sand ball. Oh snap, dude! Like without the without the handles, and that is just going to be an agent of destruction. Like doing cleans with that thing, or doing like carries, or just doing like. Uh, and for that reason, like I'm just going to want to hurt and then have to do something else. So. Yeah, the space is still very. Uh... You know, just when you think you have it dialed in, you realize you don't, you don't know anything at all. You know. Yeah, like, and I, and I don't think what we're doing is, you know, it's not, it's not running and fitness, right? Where there's like straight line progressions and straight lines to get to places. We're still trying to figure this all out. For sure, I think that's a good segue into like, kind of what we have coming down the line. For sure. Yeah. For our you know, one brain, well, actually I should say three brains are smarter than one. Mm -hmm. And it's a, we're, we're collaborating you, me, Meg Jacoby, kind of putting together all of our, our intellectual property into one space and how we like to train because yes, like I have blind sides that you pick up very, that you pick up intuitively. And Meg is, Meg is similar. She kind of has a, has a blend of both. Sometimes she's just like, She's a little, she's probably a little bit more closer on your end. She's like, I feel weak right now. I'm going to go just hammer something, you know, but is also benefiting from straight line progressions. Mm -hmm. So we're in the middle of trying, of rolling out a, an, uh, training app that will, I hopefully launch later this summer. We don't put a date on it just so we don't, we have August, a date. <laughs> we, we have a date, but, uh, we don't know how it's going to go. But yeah, so that's something that's going to be really fun, I think, on our end and, and being able to put all of our all, all of our all of the work that we've been doing and, and really all the work that we're going to continue to do into this place. Right. Like these type of conversations that we're having, it's really an exploration into where we need to go. But we're going to take this and put it into a specific app so we can so we can share it with people so mm -hmm. that they can kind of cut through it. Right. Like we're doing a lot of this. We think about this a lot of time. Like it's basically our full time deal. Like you're not doing a full time anymore, but you're thinking about it full time. Absolutely. Thinking about it full time. So and that's the hope, right? Is that we can help drive this thing forward and take all of the things that we have learned and, and deliver it out to the people. So make sure you're paying attention because we'll be dropping some more specific dates on the, and like uh, prices and things like that when it comes time. It's for going it, to be very cheap, very affordable with a lot of, information and education i mean too, too much, much to be quite honest we're too gonna much have content training plans for every single race you can think of we're gonna have video breakdowns exercise breakdowns so that you know if you don't know how to do something we're gonna be on there showing you how to do it i mean it is it's gonna be awesome yeah we're gonna have specific collections like here's here's workouts ryan can't likes here's workouts meg jacoby likes here's workouts rich ryan likes yep. and it's just gonna be if you want to be very structured in your training, you'll have the ability to do that. If you just want inspiration in your training, you'll have the ability to do that. And like I said, it, it, like we said, it's going to be very affordable that it's not, it's, it's just going to be a wealth of information for hopefully anyone who's participating in these hybrid fitness racing events. Absolutely. And how about that? I, I, I think hybrid fitness racing, if we like fitness racing sounds stupid, right? Hybrid racing. It's not a complete story. It's like, what are we talking about? But hybrid fitness racing. I think that that sums it all up. I can get on board with that. You think about it. You think. Yeah. About it. Also, something you think about is a name. We're going to hopefully make this as reoccurring as we can. We're not exactly sure what it's going to look like. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on, on, on if this is something that you, you like, it's something that's valuable to you. And we're going to continue to, to, to bring like this very type of specific conversation toward you but we don't have a name we have some we, we have some we, we have, have some ideas should we list what they are you want to do it what, well I, I got a couple i got a couple i got a couple so i sent you a text message let's see how quickly can i find this we text a lot so it's not gonna be it's gonna be behind like oh damn Jokic, that's that guy Talking about Christian Brown. Denver, shout out Denver, baby. Let's go. Oh my God. You're you're a Nuggets fan now. I try to make you a Nuggets <laughs> fan. I try to make you a Nuggets fan all year. You're like, nah, LeBron. And you're like, nah, Jimmy Buckets. Dude, dude, now, I was, now you're I was out all here. about the heat. I was all about the heat. Now, now you're out here. You're yeah, you're 
a, a big Tyler Hero fan. Christian Brown is that guy, though. He's Show not him. that guy. Relax. He, that's my that's my son. Relax. So I came. I sent you a text, and I I, I sent a couple names. The first one was the Compro Convo. Compro Convo. Compro Convo with Rich and Ryan. The hybrid discussion. Slightly compromised, mm-hmm. which was an idea that you guys actually had for race brain. Early race brain. Um, early race brain. I you like know, slightly compromised a lot. You know, you know, Jack came through with that race brain name. Did he? Yeah. He was just like, how it's, about race brain? I was like, that's great. So simple yet effective. But it works. And Jack came through the creativity. And then we had like, you know, we live here in Denver. So like the mile high boys, the mile high guys, mile high brid. Mm-hmm. I kind of like play. that wordplay um, hybrid. So yeah, we those were a few of my ideas. You never really sent me any of yours except some. I like the hybrid some, racing private. I don't even know what that means. It's like the running public, just flip it. Oh, okay, so we're trolling them. We're just trolling we're them. We're of trolling. course, that's what we're doing. Are you kidding me? And then they had they had, another one of their preliminary names was the BK Corral. So we could do we could be the KR Corral. Yeah. Or yeah. or uh, there was one uh we could just be Rich Ryan Camp podcast. Rich, Rich Ryan, Ryan Camp Rich Ryan Camp conversation. <laughs> Let's go. See? A buddy of mine in high school his name is Ryan Walters, good friend of mine to this day. <clears throat> we had English class together and we would always sign our shit Rich Ryan Walters. We thought it was hilarious. So we can make that work. Um so yeah, I mean, if anyone has ideas, those are kind of what we've come up with. If you have some, shoot us a DM. Um, we're gonna try to keep these episodes what around about an hour. About an hour. So, we don't need to go. We don't need to go. We don't need to go um, too crazy. And I also want to let the listeners know too that this will be. We do want to provide information and education to you guys, but this will also just be kind of a fun place for. But really, Rich and I to just hang out and shoot the shit. And, you know, sometimes I think we're going to actually link up and and be in the same place to where we can record some episodes in person, maybe have a glass of wine in hand, maybe some Pinot, some some other things, (laughs) some mind enhancers, some gummy bears. (laughs) But uh, we really just want this to be a fun platform for for everyone to just kind of come and, uh, you know be embraced with, with all things hybrid fitness. And, um, again, we'll, we'll have some education and information on here, but we also just want to have a good time and kind of let, let loose a little bit and just two boys, two boys shooting the shit, hanging out. No, we're not going to do interviews necessarily. Mm, No, we might, we might have some people on from time to time, but maybe, but not probably not done. Not, not don't expect that. That ain't it. No. All right, dude. I think we did it. That was fun. So Shout shout, shout out power lift. Shout out, the Power official shout out sponsor 10, of the the unnamed podcast. <laughs> shout you, out uh, ten thousand. You give uh, <laughs> we'll give out our individual codes and see who uses which ones. R R R twenty, Powerlift. R R fifteen. R no. R Ryan fifteen. R Ryan twenty. Powerlift. What are you? R Kent twenty and R Kent yeah. fifteen. We'll just combine ours. We'll just come up with one. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see if they can work that out for us. All right. What else we got? What we got? Who? What do we got coming up? Your boy's got a deck of strong this weekend. Deck is strong. Deck VJ's is strong. about to Let's put go. you in that headlock. I don't VJ's know about that. Give it to you. What do you think? I mean, we haven't seen this setup. Do you know what this gym looks like? It's in I have uh, no this, clue. Shout it's out in Highland to Ranch. Highland Ranch. It's Maniac. Called, yes. Maniac Fitness, or I New think it's affiliate. one of the like a, like a like an Orange Theory is kind of what I think they are like. Oh, uh, like an F forty five type of deal. Yeah. So how the um, space might lay out, I'm not I'm not sure because that's always the thing, right? Like, how big is the space going to be? Right. And I'm already in there. I, I did a race last year that qualified me into the world championships for this year based on the timeline. Maybe. Um, it should hold up. Yeah, because you, um, you did 1130 or something. That's yeah. currently two. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, time-wise, I'm again, I don't know how the setup is going to be. If I can run anywhere close to 1130 right now, I'd be That'd be sick. ecstatic. Be huge. Really, like 1140, I'd be probably okay with. Really just kind of check in, see where we're at with with that kind of fitness because training for a 60 minute event and then training for a, an 11 minute event is is quite the difference in in kind of output and like what you're doing. So back to that 400 thing where I was like, 
okay, I just want to be conservative and then just close really hard. But I didn't have that gear to be able to close. So really I should have gone out faster and just hope that my strength held on, on to it. Yeah. So maybe that's going to be the same for Deca Strong. Maybe you have this opportunity to be like a little bit aggressive up front. And because mm-hmm. you've got all the months of endurance just like and stacked the, up. Yeah. And the power is not is probably a little bit below where it was where you did like your 11, right. 10 or 11. Was it 11 or 9 or 11, 10? I still don't know, to be quite honest. Got to check the record. 11, 09. 11, 09. We'll say, we'll say you're under. Um, but that might be interesting. I mean, it would suck real bad if it didn't go well. Because <laughs> then like you're at that bike and you're like, oh boy, this might not, this might not happen. But you got a time. Might as well. Yeah. That uh, that affiliate in Arvada, uh, Arsenal, mm-hmm. um, strength and conditioning, or whatever they they have tanks now. They're gonna. It's a huge space. Like they could do a straight line strong if they wanted to, which would be huge. You know, like a real easy, just like boom, 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 boom. Um, so I'm hoping they get affiliated soon. They're affiliated. I just hope they got to put on an event or two. Um, so I have to come up and show some face. Say sure, how, they, how, got, they got the number one and number two guy. We're right here. World right now. We're here. Holler, holler at our guy Mo over there. Um, what else for me this week? Nothing. Traveling back east for a quick trip uh, over the weekend, and then just working on this nine day cycle. Man, I'm I'm kind of enjoying it. I'm wanna, I'm interested to I, to see how it progresses through. I did a, a, a like a ten day cycle during High Rocks, and I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Um Real quick, what was your workout of the week? Let's do a workout of the week here. Workout of the week. All right, let me let me, let me pull mine up real quick. Workout of the week brought to you by Powerlift. Not yet, not officially brought to you by Powerlift, but yeah, but essentially pretty much brought to you by Powerlift. So I mean, I had that I had that Karen, which I I did enjoy. It's not a great workout necessarily to be a workout of the week. It's just 150 wall balls for time. I had oh, I had one that was interesting where I did. Um, I want to, I, again, like just working on things that are going to be like feeling a certain feeling is, is, is what I'm kind of diving into here and working a little bit more in that like strength realm. So I did two 16 minute, uh, AMRAPs, uh, essentially back to back and, or one was four rounds of whatever. And that ended up being about 16 minutes. And I did a 16 minute AMRAP after, and I want to do these like a bigger, like connected, station only workouts because that's something i haven't really done since i've done necessarily crossfit so i worked in some squat cleans into the mix Ooh. yeah so i did eight five squat cleans 155 five devil's press at 50 pounds and then i did 20 uh heavy sandbag walking lunges my my heavy sandbags about 120 so i did a 60 minute amrap of that so that was interesting just because like the pacing was so much different the output was pretty high. Like 155 for a squat clean is not heavy, but like it's something I haven't necessarily done in a long time. Mm-hmm. So I could probably progress that up toward 165, 175, maybe 185 at a certain point, but 155 was enough for me. So 16 minute AMRAP, five squat cleans, five heavy devil's press. You ever fuck with devil's press at 50 I pounds? I do, man. I do. They're, they're not fun. They're not fun. I was at first putting it to my shoulders and then jerking it. I found it easier just to swing it. Snatch it. Snatch it. Yeah. yeah. And then heavy sandbag lunges. Nice. What's yours? Mine was an E3 mom. So every third minute on the minute, this is for the duration of the workout. We did five by 500 meter row. So if the row takes you two minutes, you get a minute recovery. Mm -hmm. I was trying to keep them in right around 140 ish. So minute, minute, minute 20 rest. So five by five by 500 row E3 mom. Five by five hundred meter ski E three mom, and then five by twenty five cal assault bike right into a tenth of a mile run E three E three mom. Okay, so you so get off that was, bike in like a minute. No, I was getting off the bike in like forty five seconds. So you're hammering it, and then trying to still keep it around the work around like a minute thirty, minute forty or so with a minute twenty recovery. Nice and. I was actually pretty surprised with my ability to come off that assault bike and go right into like a quick run that I'm going to drill that into my body. <laughs> it's got to happen. Like everyone knows that I can crank out the assault bike, but then I pay for it afterwards. If I can get to the point where I can crank that out and then still continue to run afterwards, 
um, that's going to be a big place for me to kind of take the next leap. You'll take second easily then. You won't have to fight for second, second that way. You won't have to fight for second that way. And then there was there was a finisher there. I did another E2 mom this time, every second minute on the minute. And I did this two rounds. So you cycle through each exercise twice. This You could consider this a finisher of the workout. It was um, lunges times 40 meters with the high rocks weight, mm -hmm. um, which was taken about minute 10 or so. So you'd have about 50 seconds rest, um, 25 thrusters with 105 pounds, which isn't like a ton of weight, but something shit, shit got real. Yeah. It's um, not nothing. Um, thrusters are another thing. I really want to incorporate a lot more this off season. Uh, the third exercise was 25 burpees, which those ended up sucking a lot. And then, um, for every second minute. Okay. 20. Okay. Yeah. This is how many minutes? Two minutes. You have two minutes to get this work done. Total. Total. Uh, how long was that E two mom? The twelve minutes 15, or just once? Fifteen minutes. Okay. So there's four exercises, and then you cycle through them twice. And the fourth oh. one was two hundred meter pharma carry. Oh yeah. So Were like you you're finishing in one thirty, and you've got thirty seconds rest, then you go right back into the lunges, then twenty five thrusters, twenty five burpees. Yeah, that's a good one. Pharma that's carries. a good one. Working that stupid farmer's carry. I think sucks. So I was toast. I was toast after that. Went up, took a shower, and then went to work all day. Went to work, so. man. Then you started. Then you started really putting in work. Then you got forty thousand more steps. All right, last last piece. Dylan was fifty one fifty five point eight half marathon, and then he he all, he mentioned that that was the pace. That was his pace one fifty five eight. Dang, he did one fifty point eight for a half marathon row. I think that's even more impressive. That's like nasty. Yeah. That's yeah. gross. I'm, I'm not going to try. I'm not no. going to try it. All right, squad. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll be back. Well, we need to come out with a better sign out than that. What you're you all got? right. So you're our all right squad. That's what you use for your podcast. we got to come up with something different for ours. We'll right. figure it out. Take us out. I don't got nothing. I, that's I why I, that's our why first I did, episode. That's why I freaking just did the thing over here. All right. All right. Work, we'll workshop it. Later. Later.